Hey, what's up, JoJo in the morning family? Hope you're having a super, super good day. Hey, I want to kind of follow up with the video I did yesterday and go right along the same lines. A few weeks ago, we had our good friends, Doug and Jeannie Cooper, come in and they were doing inner healing for our church. Very powerful weekend. And Apostle Jeannie said something that just grabbed me. You ever been sitting in a service or at a conference, convention, whatever, and somebody says one phrase that just grabs you? She said something. She said, everybody operates out of one of two things, purpose or pain. Purpose or pain. You act, talk, think, everything you do pretty much goes through the lens of purpose or pain. Watch what I'm telling you. You see an old friend, hey, how's it going? What are they going to do? They're going to usually say what they're excited about, what's on their mind, or a pain. It could be a physical pain, or it could be um, a mental pain, or pain of the past, or whatever. Today I saw this guy in town. I mean, every time I see this guy, I just I just start laughing. He is just so so funny. He's the type of guy that you want to run into. And I said, I said, hey man, hey go, man, what's going on? We just started just, and I said, and he's going to tell you what's going right in his life. Okay, he was like, man, had an incredible weekend, man. My wife and I, we took our kids away. I'm just, I'm saying hi. And this dude's telling me what's going great. I'm just like, yeah, that sounds awesome, man. And he's just telling me, man, my job is good. I got another promotion. And da, 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 da. I'm just like, great, dude. It's just, that's him. I, I was walking to Walmart when I saw him. Then I saw another guy. And I said, hey, how's, uh, how's, uh, hey, how's it going? I knew. Oh, pray for me. Pray for me, Apostle. Pray for me. I said, all right, man, I will pray right here. And I got to pray. Pray for me. Pray for my wife. I'll pray for your wife. Pray for my kids. They're all, and just, he started telling me what's wrong with everybody's life. And I'm just like, okay, man. And I, I loved on them, prayed, prayed over them. That, that's how it is. I want you to watch yourself. The next time you see somebody in public and they say, hey, how are you doing? Sometimes people really don't care. Okay. I want you, I want you to watch the first thought that comes to your mind. How are you doing? Your response is, you going to talk about a physical pain, what you're going through. The other day, I said something. Kind of can't believe I said it, but I'd have probably said it again. I, I saw this guy say, hey, man, how's it going? He said, do you really want to know? And I said, no. No, I don't. Let me just pray for you. And I said, Lord, I pray you be with my friend. You bless my friend. And let everything that's going wrong turn around and be right. In Jesus' name, amen. That's a lot of turning around. God's got to. I said, hey, man, I got to go. I just know him. Okay? When, when my wife and I pray for people, we pray for people to run within life that have the good mindset. Now, when people want us to disciple them, train them, join our mentoring, yeah, We'll take anybody, but you got to change. I've had some people join our mentoring, and after two months, I'm like, hey, don't waste your money, okay? You're, you're not changing. You can, you can stay in, but after two months, you have not changed one bit. It is a mindset that you want to change you know, everybody that's ever mentored me, do you know what they said about me? You were fun to mentor. You were fun to disciple because you were hungry. You were hungry for purpose. God put you on this earth for a purpose. 
He put you on earth for a purpose. Okay? When I believe in divine appointments, okay? Pray big. I pray big for divine appointments. Every time I run into somebody, um, I always think, is this a divine appointment? Maybe this person locally is supposed to join our church. Maybe somebody's supposed online that reaches out is supposed to join our mentoring. Maybe they're supposed to join our, our health program. Maybe we're going to go in business together. You know, there's people that I've gone in business with that I haven't even known two years. You know, what is this divine appointment? Maybe I'm just supposed to speak a word into this person. Maybe this person is supposed to speak a word into me. You have no idea every time you meet somebody what, what the divine connection is. But if you're negative every time you see everybody, nobody's going to want to connect with you. If you ever see somebody that say, oh, I'm alone. Oh, I have nobody. It's probably their fault. Okay, because if you're full of joy, if you're full of happiness, if you're full of love, if you're successful, people are going to be around you. People are going to want to be around you. Okay, why? Because you're full of life. You are, you're full of life. You know, I had somebody say, everybody around me is toxic. Well, get around other people. Um, Sunday before last, we were in our transition during our church service, and my wife was doing the transition, and she had this big smile on her face, and she walked over to me and said, look at this congregation. Just look at this congregation. This is what I see when I pray for our church. And everybody was walking around, hugging and shaking hands, and so we just sat there. We just sat there for a while. And we sat there for a while. And we sat there for a while. And people just kept hugging and shaking hands and, you know, I call it shoulder patting. And she's like, well, <laughs> I guess we might need to keep going. I said, yeah. And and that Sunday after church, they nobody would leave. People would not leave church. And I don't just mean lingering in the altar. They did that for a while too. But nobody would leave church. <laughs> you know, it, that's because everybody there is happy. They're hungry for God, hungry for fellowship. People are wanting life-giving relationships. And you see people kind of matching up with people where they are in life. And so you just see so many organic friendships being birthed. That's how our life should be. Like when, whenever I would go to the gym, in which we have a home gym now, but I go to the gym, I would see guys that were about my age, you know, and, and just, you know, connect with different people to work out with and stuff. And so I'm telling you, if, if, if you're in pain, you're going to push away the divine appointments. Did you hear me? That was the most important thing I'll probably say today. If you're in pain and you don't get healed, you will push away all the divine appointments. I remember one time, I'll never forget, I was, I was at a conference and I was sitting around some generals in the faith. And you hear me talk about that a lot when I'm around generals in the faith. I just listen, okay? I just listen. And I remember them talking about, man, and I remember a few weekends before I was around a, a bunch of people my age and they were like, where's the fathers? Where's the fathers in the faith? Where's the fathers? We don't have any true spiritual mothers or fathers. And then I was with the generals. They were like, man, where are the sons and daughters at that actually want something? And I was thinking there's a disconnect in some of the generations and so at my age, I'm in the in-between age. I still need to glean from the generals. And I, there's a younger generation that I can pour into. So I'm a true son and I'm a true father. And I'm going to be open and vulnerable 
but I'm not going to bring all my pain. Everybody's got pain. We're going to have pain in this, this world. We're going to have suffering, trials, tribulations, but we can't, we got to learn how to get rid of it. We got to learn, we got to learn how to function out of purpose and not pain. When pain overrides your purpose, you are in a dangerous place. You ever seen a professional athlete who's limping a little bit, but they're out there? Their purpose is overriding their pain. Now, let's say like a, a football player, if they break their leg, okay, their pain just overrode their purpose. There ain't nothing they can do about it. Pain overrode their purpose. But like, like, like if they've just kind of got like, like a bruised hamstring or, 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 or the knees just hurting, their purpose can override their pain. Okay? The thing is in life, you have to get healed to be able to function the way God wants you to. Uh, there's been times in my life when I would get you know set free from, from an offense or unforgiveness or a broken wrong mindset and I was like man how long did I carry that around how long did I carry that offense how long did I carry that broken mindset how long did I have a religious mindset a poverty mindset that I was walking around wounded and didn't even know I didn't have the mind of Christ and if I don't have the mind of Christ how can I steward the things of the kingdom and I, I have noticed that when I get healed from an offense or walk in a proper mindset, that my next level relationships are always there for me. That, that mentor I needed, that close friend that I needed. You following me? And so make sure you are operating and functioning out of purpose and not pain because pain can creep up on you, okay? What you got to understand is the Bible talks about, you know, that, that we're to go to the God like a little child, okay? Think about this. When you're a kid and you hurt yourself, what you do? What do you do? You run to mama, grandmama. And say, oh, I, I slammed my hand in the door. I, I scraped my knee. When we get older, we don't, we don't run to God and say, God, I, that person wounded me. That person afflicted me. I perceive whatever it may be. We need to get healed. You know, there's people that do inner healing. There's people that do sozo ministry. There, you need to be healed so you can operate out of purpose. And when you operate out of purpose... Things just work out for you. Things just change. When I started, and there was a time in my life I operated out of pain and offense. And everything suffered in my life. But when I started operating out of purpose, woo, the manifestation of the glory. Of God. My marriage got better. My parenting got better. Finances just got a lot better. The friends I was running with, God brought me a, people that were high-level thinkers, full of the Holy Ghost, fasting and prayer. Brought me business associates that were like super sharp. Everything started getting better. The birds started singing. The sky was a bluer. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. I would always pray big. It was my thought process that I let pain override purpose. But when I dealt with the pain, I got back in the game. Okay? When a professional athlete gets hurt, season-ending injury, what is the first thing they say? Oh, they're on a rigorous um, recovery schedule. They are doing physical therapy, all this stuff, this, that, and the other, and they're going to be back next season. And what does the athlete always say? I'll be back next season better than ever. That's their mindset. I'm hurt right now. I'm in pain. I'm about to deal with my pain. And y'all ain't seen nothing yet. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. We need to have that attitude.
And let me tell you, you're coming back better than ever. Hey, if you need prayer, reach out to me. If you want to know about our mentoring program, reach out to me. You can go to our website, jojodawson.net. Find out everything you need to know. And I want to thank all of our financial partners and prayer partners. Couldn't do what we do without you. Love y'all.